Chris Bukowski for Emerging Civil War. I'm at Totopotomy Creek, part of the Richmond National Battlefield, and just what a gem this place is. A big shout out to Richmond for all the work they've done here. They've owned the property since 2006. Before that, for 280 years, it was owned by the Sheldon family. This is known as the Sheldon House, Rural Plains. Uh, Patrick Henry married Sarah Sheldon in the parlor of this house once upon a time. It was a different Sarah Sheldon, still the same family, but a descendant who met the Union Army here on May 29th, 1864. Francis Barlow's division showed up on this property, and uh, just across the road from me, David Bell Birney's men are over in that direction, and the uh, Confederates are going to be off in that direction, about uh, 700 yards. Uh, federal skirmishers are going to push Confederate skirmishers back, who are going to fall back across Totopotomy Creek and take up some pretty strong positions on the far side. Uh, Federals are going to immediately start to dig in. What I want to do today is follow the walking trail that Richmond National Battlefield has laid out here because it's a, a neat little path, a neat little site, definitely worth exploring. Looking forward through the magic of technology uh, to bring you along with me. So come on, let's go. We're just behind the main house. There have been some slave cabins over in this area. Here at stop number two, you can see behind me uh, original section of the uh, federal defenses. They were built on May 30th by Nelson Miles. Most of the earthworks through here have been obliterated in the 155 years since the war, but uh, this is one stretch that still remains. Stop number three is the former location of the Sheldon Family Cemetery. Um, all the remains were actually removed in 1952 and taken to Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond. Uh, the Park Service says there's undoubtedly a, a slave cemetery on the property someplace too, but it has not yet been discovered. Here at stop number four is a line of works. The path bisects it and then it heads off into the woods in that direction. This was a pretty bare hillside in 1864, so this probably was an advanced skirmish line these guys dug in just to give themselves a little protection out here in this advanced position. The creek is about 300 yards in that direction. We're gonna keep moving there. The park property actually ends here at tour stop number five. There is a wayside, and uh, over here there's actually a nice little bench. Um, you might be able to hear my companion, Maxwell James. He and I are getting ready to head across the bridge, which is in the background there. Um, even though the Park Service property ends, they do say you can go across the bridge and check out the Confederate works on the other side, so we're going to do that. Um, there were Federals stationed in this area, skirmishers, who actually will push across the creek and uh, capture portions of the Confederate works on the other side before dri being driven out. Um, that's because, as you'll see in a second, um, the Confederate works, although formidable, um, actually have an inherent weakness to them that we'll talk about when we get across the bridge. We're going to talk to the camera. Say hi Maxwell James. Oh my God, James. That's Maxwell James. We're going to go across the bridge, aren't we? Are you excited? Excited. Excited to go across the bridge? Across the bridge. All right, we're going to go. Let's, let's go. Totopotomy Creek is as much a swampy morass as it is an actual creek. You can be able to see over here, that's the main channel of the creek. Uh, but this whole lowland floods and gets swampy and there are lots of channels through here. So it's uh, kind of a, a mess to get through. Does not have nearly the imposing topographical advantages, topographical advantages that say uh, the North Anna did or even some of the smaller rivers earlier in the campaign like the Nye River or the Po River. But still, imagine going across this swampy lowland getting your feet stuck in the mud and your shoes sucked off and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Meanwhile, Confederates are waiting on the far ridge. First time I came here was with Phil Greenwald. We were doing pictures for the book he and Dan Davis co-authored, Hurricane from the Heavens, about the Cold Harbor phase of the Overland campaign. So we came to Totopotomy Creek. The hill behind us was bare because it was winter. It was, uh, I would say, late winter, early spring, but it was a freezing cold day. Uh, the daffodils were up, and that was about the only bit of cheer. Uh, but we could see the hillside behind us, which is obscured by foliage now, and it is steep. We climbed it, just as the Federal skirmishers did, um, but boy, it was a bit of a hike, and imagine getting shot at the whole time. Here along part of the path, you can see how steep that is, although the camera doesn't quite do it justice. The path on this side of the creek much narrower and more primitive than it was on the Park Service property. The Confederate works on the south bank of the stream are actually uh, in private hands, owned by a private foundation. Behind me, you might be able to see there are some houses, there's a housing 
development that backs right up to this position and the developers sort of set aside the works themselves. Um, but there are plenty of works through here off on the other side of the path, there are some rifle pits, um, but you might be able to see just how steep, I'm looking at the camera here, you might see how steep that bank is. That's an inherent problem for the Confederates because you can see they're built just a couple yards back from the crest. They can't shoot down into the uh, swampy area. So as Federals make that charge, Confederates can't depress their guns enough to hit them so the Federals can get in under the fire and then up that hill. Confederates can advance to the edge of the crest and shoot down into there, but then in doing so, they lose their own protection and they're silhouetted against the top of this hill. So it's not necessarily an ideal situation for them. That does let the Federals get a lodgment up here. Um, daylight will bring an end to that fighting before uh, Federals find some Confederate resistance the next day that uh, kind of makes them a little nervous. Uh, so we're going to head back across to finish up this uh, this tour. Um, but uh, definitely worth the hike over here. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Some really well-preserved works that are kind of off through this area behind me. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Back on Park Service property, tour stop number six is another set of earthworks as Grant continued kind of stretching his left. Stretching leftward and southward. That's going to be Grant's uh, continuing plan here. He's been doing that all along over the course of the Overland campaign, trying to get around Lee's right. He's going to have successes here, stretch the line down toward Bethesda Church, have some successes there, get him down to Cold Harbor June 1st, have some successes there. And although none of these are the knockout blow that he's looking for, they are going to encourage him and make him optimistic about the chance of really getting that one swing in that he's hoping for. And that's why he launches those attacks on June 3rd at Cold Harbor. Uh, so you can hear, yeah, and see, um, you might be able to hear Maxwell saying, yay, because he's uh, looking forward to that big knockout punch, I suppose. Of course, we all know Grant's not going to get it. Um, he had initially hoped to launch that attack on June 3rd. Second, um, but delays really caused him to postpone it. That's going to allow Confederates time to counteract, dig in, and be ready for those assaults on the morning of the third. But really, the series of events that begins here at Tatabana Creek and even the days before at uh, Haw's shop, um, that's going to lead Grant to be thinking optimistically by the time he shows up at Cold Harbor. Alas, I am not going to be able to show up in Cold Harbor. I know you've been following with me here for the uh, Overland 155. I have to go to California to speak, and so I'm not going to be here in order to get to Cold Harbor, but hopefully later this summer, I'll be able to get down there myself, and uh, we'll sort of catch up and do a little wrap up at that point. But it's been a real privilege having you with us here, uh, following the Overland 155. I'm for Emerging Civil War. I'm Chris Mikowski.